about to glaze a dark clay mug um, and the first step is getting it on the wheel held by the give and grip and wax resisting the base. So I use wax resist firstly to put a line to dip to and secondly to cover the foot so that the dent pull will stick to it. I'll show you that in a second. First glaze going on to this particular combination uh, which is sunset is Heath A to V Ivory. And it's already mixed, I was just it sat for a few minutes, so making sure. Uh, clean it with a slightly damp sponge to make sure there's no dust on the surface. And then this just gets dipped around the rim. So looking for a little contrast white just inside and outside. Next up, I'm dipping in the outer glaze, which is unhelpfully called Sunset, um, because initially the Sunset glaze combination was just Sunset glaze on the outside. Um, but then I decided it looked better with the heath added around the rim. a link to this in the description. Um, it's essentially a floating blue with the cobalt swapped for manganese except that 1% um, cobalt replaced with 4% manganese so the chemistry had to be adjusted to take account of the extra flux but it's basically just a floating blue redone. Now waxed foot and this is my car dent puller again I'll post a link in the description what you do is centre it on the piece, make sure you get a good seal around, lock it in place, and you now have a way of holding it from the foot. So roll it around to get the inside dunk of it. Four seconds. I blow the glaze that sits on the bottom of the handle, and then again on the top to. Um, just stop that puddle that you get there because on the runny glazes what that means is you get a big drip forming on the bottom of the handle and on the oil spot glazes it would be really thick on the top and you'd actually get bubbles that wouldn't completely heal the oil spots when they're excessively thick and not completely melted um, make hollows which aren't particularly they don't look nice and they don't feel nice. So the two areas that that's going to happen is either end of the handle as you've got it whichever way up it can pull. If you just blow it, it goes around the outside, you don't have that problem. So that's that glaze. Now let it sit for a few minutes and then I'll do the inside. All right, the more observant ones among you might notice that this is not the mug that I have been glazing up until now. I just did this with that mug and it went wrong. So um, take two. This is how I glaze the inside of the mugs. I don't always weigh it out but it's a very handy way to make sure you're putting exactly the right amount in. Firstly you need to know how much water is in your glaze mix um, because obviously that will throw off the amount of glaze you get per weight of mixture. But what I do is I put a mug on there and I'm looking to glaze just the inside so I'm not, it's not coming out so I want to put in exactly as much glaze as I want, which I know for a small mug is about 25 grams. So I just pour in 25 grams-ish of mixture, roll it round to get the bottom covered, and then just roll it around the walls. Now, this is quite a movable glaze, the floating blue, so it will flow down the walls and make them interesting which means you want as much as you can get up near the top and not a huge amount at the bottom you want enough coating the bottom that it looks good as it is but not so much that it starts to you'll get the thicker it is the more it craze the more likely it is to turn slightly matte um, you get a whole load of issues where it's too thick um, but the walls it will sort itself out because it flows so 
what I do, make sure the bottom's covered, get it round the top as much as I can um, without coming out, and that's it. Alright, it's 24 hours later, and this is just before they go in the kiln. They've dried overnight, um, and they're basically fully dry at this point. You can touch up the glaze, you don't have to do this, um, but I always find it's better to do two applications. Um, so basically, you'd apply all the glazes once, let them dry, and then add a little bit more rather than thicker applications the first time because the, they're far more likely to crack um, and crawl off if you get too thick an application. Whereas if you let it settle and then add a bit more, you can actually patch up the small cracks rather than exacerbating them. So, same glazes, same order. Um, I've got a mop brush, little mop brush, um, combined with big brushes. They're my favourite type. A couple of quid from most pottery suppliers. Uh, and I just, yeah, brush on. So this is Heath Ivory around the rim. This is the contrast glaze for sunset. So the more you put in this, the more the white band around the top will contrast the rest of the glaze and the more it will flow down. So, yep, just a quick brush around and that's done. The next glaze to go back on is the sunset. Again, you don't need to do this, but um, I find it makes sure that you've got enough glaze on without having to apply a really thick layer the first time around and risk it crawling. It only takes a few seconds to do. And it depends. You don't have to do it. It's le far less important with sunset than it is with the traditional floating blue recipe just because where sunset's thin, I really like how it looks. Whereas with floating blues, which is why I've got in this habit, um, when they're too thin, they go a brownish green, or at least uh, my recipes do on my clay. It'll be different depending on, you know, if they're an iron-rich stoneware or a dark stoneware, they look really good thin. But if you've got a glaze that doesn't look good thin, it's a real shame to have to throw away a pot that is otherwise perfect just because the glaze is a fraction too thin and it doesn't look good. So, I touch them up the day before I fire them, just add a little bit more, guarantees that any spots that were thin when they were dipped now have a little bit more glaze on and it'll improve the overall look. Of course, you could just dip for a bit longer the day before um, you need to find out what works for you and what works with your specific glazes because different glazes behave differently. Finally, the last glaze to be re-added is the floating glue on the inside. Again, just a very quick coat to make sure there's enough glaze to get the running effect. And that's all it takes. It's all you need to do, if you've picked the right glazes, then in the firing they'll run together and you'll get interesting results. You don't have to do a particularly complicated application, and obviously you don't need to do any of what I've just done today. Um, that's just more to ensure that it does what I want rather than an essential part of it.